Rebecca Heinrichs remembers that well. Is a scholar at the Hudson Institute and joins us now. Rebecca, you watched this hearing. She really wants to have revisionist history here. She does want, does, wants everyone to, th to think that she's not culpable, but she is. Oh, I was very interested in these hearings, Brian, because I am a mother of five young children. So I, I lived through this pandemic like the whole rest of my fellow Americans did, and I know exactly what happened. She is trying to dish out falsehood after falsehood, and she thinks that we're going to actually swallow this. We know that in 2020, as you said, she said that those, those of us, it's not just President Trump, but those of us parents, private schools and other red states who wanted to open schools were callous, reckless and cruel. Yeah. Um, when we take that personally, we love our kids more than anything. And we knew from the beginning we could look at the we could look at the studies that were coming out too, and we knew that our kids were sit were perfectly safe going back into these schools. And it's really um, really offensive that she would gas like this before Congress and lie. Let's be honest. Uh, she said on August 21st, she celebrated when a judge struck down the Florida, uh, Florida was going to open up their schools. The judge struck it down and stopped them from doing it. She celebrated. On February 21st, she said she needs more time to bring her rank and file along. She liked to open up schools, but the teachers weren't quite, uh, quite ready yet. She kind of forgot that. Also important, she basically admitted, and we knew this because it was a trail, that she was writing the policy that the CDC would put out, editing the memos in real time. What qualifications did she have? Right. She's trying to deflect that she was really the one that was deciding this, but she was lobbying the CDC. And we know that those areas where the unions were the most influential across the country, those are the areas that the school closures stayed closed longer. So we know that she had a direct effect on this. We know, by the way, Brian, that in all of these areas, too, um, these children were suffering. I mean, parents can see this, but we were educated people. We could look at, we could look at the studies. We could look at the, what's going on in Europe with other schools. We could see that schools were opening safely. And she continued to, right. to really scaremonger and shame people when we knew that the science actually was on the side of the parents who wanted children back into the classroom. You know what she has in common with Anthony Fauci? They will never say this. I was wrong. I thought this. This is what I thought. This is what I learned. People say, OK, maybe I understand a little bit where you came from, but they want to they want to revise what we know they said. And number two, I think it's important. They never think of collateral damage. If I keep the schools closed, I don't want to get sick. But we don't think about what's happening at home. The rooms are closed. They're not paying attention. Minority kids aren't open up a laptop. And most of the time, there's no parent having supervision there. And they needed the schools open the most. And now we find out, and we knew it then, they were not susceptible to this virus. No, mental health problems went up. And scores, especially math and reading proficiency, went way down. Children need advocates. My children are going to be okay by the grace of God. They've got parents who are married who are going to advocate for them. But think about all those children with just a single mom who had to go back to work and they were stuck in front of a screen. Those are the children who needed an advocate. Randy should have been advocating for them. She was right. not. She became their adversary and an adversary of public education. And remember, uh, these idiots were going from the first pandemic six feet apart. And they said, well, if we spread these to death six feet apart, not be able to get kids back in school. Another reason to keep the doors shut. And then they say, wait a second, that's not based on anything. Six feet doesn't mean anything. No one ever apologized for that. It's incredible. Yep. It's bringing me back to that time. I'm going to be, I'm going to go nuts. All right, Rebecca, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.